Hi, I'm Dorothy Griffiths. I'm Yona Lenski. And we're co-developers of the Sociosexual Knowledge and Attitude Tool. We're going to, in this film, introduce you to the tool, uh, the purpose for which it was designed, and also give you some demonstration of how you can use it. Yes, in a few moments we're going to be meeting Mo, who's an actress who's volunteered to take part in an assessment. We'll be doing an assessment to see how she might do in a sex education course to learn about what kinds of things she'd be interested in knowing more about and also what her current attitudes are. And then we're going to talk about how you can score and interpret the uh, tool as well. So enjoy the film and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about this evaluation tool. Why should we assess the sexual knowledge and attitudes of people who have been offended against or who have offended? The assessment of the sexual knowledge and attitudes of offenders can be done for many purposes. First, sexually inappropriate behavior, when committed by persons with developmental disabilities, is often a result of a lack of sexual knowledge. In some cases, a lack of sociosexual education is the only and most critical variable that has related to the offense. In other cases, sex education may represent one of many factors that is involved in the treatment for that offense. When a person with intellectual disabilities presents with an inappropriate sexual behavior, there's often the assumption that it may be a paraphilia, as defined in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. However, Hingsberger, Griffiths, and Quincy in 1991 wrote about the concept of counterfeit deviance. In this, they gave a number of examples where individuals with intellectual disabilities presented with inappropriate behavior that had very many different causes. For example, it could be something such as related to the structure in which the individual lives. It could be related to modeling. It could be an inappropriate selection of partners or even a behavioral challenge that has other causes. It could be just the fact that they don't know how to engage in appropriate courtship or a lack of sociosexual knowledge. There are many other reasons that can explain why a person with an intellectual disability may in fact act in an inappropriate sexual way. We suggest that you may want to refer to that article when you're doing an evaluation on an offender. Why should we assess the sexual knowledge and attitudes of victims? There may be some legal implications that have to do with the accuracy of the report but mostly is for therapeutic relevance. Does the individual understand and recognize personal boundaries? It allows us to modify therapy based upon the sexual awareness of the individual. It allows us to identify sensitive topics to avoid initially in therapy. And it allows us to identify the person's knowledge of issues regarding consent. Let's take a look at some of the issues of consent that need to be evaluated. First is, concept of legal consent. What is involved? One of the categories that is often challenging for individuals is to understand the issue of age appropriateness with regard to sexuality. In this picture we see a, an image of a man who is touching a young child in an inappropriate way. In this issue we're examining legal consent and we're trying to determine if the individual understands the concept that legal consent occurs without bribery. The question is asked is, is this okay for a person to do? But is it okay if the individual does it if he gives him $50? In this case, we're looking at legal consent from the position that a person who is entrusted with the care of the individual should not be in a position to have sexual contact with that individual. We're looking at legal consent as an issue that is without force or duress. So as you can see through the different pictures, we are trying to see if individuals understand the true concept of consent with regard to sexuality. In this profile, we see Ms. A. In most categories, she performs very well on the different subscales. However, the one area that she performs less than is expected because of her functioning is the area of healthy boundaries. She has a history of abuse, and that is reflected in her lack of knowledge about appropriate sexual boundaries and healthy boundaries.
The SCAT R record form contains several sections. On page one, place the background information regarding the individual, including the name or identification number if it's being used for research, the gender, ethnicity, again if appropriate for research, the level of intellectual functioning if known, the site and location of the evaluation, date of testing, date of examinee's birth, calculation of current age, and any special needs that may affect the assessment. In scoring the SCAT R, we generally provide one of three responses, a yes-no, a selection of a picture drawing from one or three or four choices, or the request to give a verbal description or explanation. The scoring information is contained on both the record form and on the easel. Attitude items are noted to see if the person's perspective are okay or not okay. They are not evaluated as right or wrong. To complete the graphic profile, once all the subscale scores have been recorded, turn to the graphic profile on the cover of the record form. Enter the raw score for each subscale on the top of the profile. Across all columns, circle the abbreviation of the person's level of disability, borderline, mild, moderate, severe, and then connect the circles. Using a different color, circle the number in each column that corresponds to the raw score for that column. Note that either men's or women's bodies should be completed, not both and then connect the circles. In order to do the calculations, select the T-score, which is shown in the left and right columns that correspond to the individual's actual score for each subtest. Enter the number in the T-score boxes on the bottom of each column. Total the boxes across the top of the graphic profile form and enter this as the total raw score. Then refer to Appendix B in your manual. Enter the individual's total score in the box at the bottom of the graphic profile. Interpreting the results. The graphic profile gives a graphic reference of the individual score for each subscale. It also gives a visual reference of how this individual's scores compare relative to a sample of other individuals of the same level of functioning. In interpreting the overall scores, remember the SCAT-R is not a standardized test. It is an indication of what the individual knows and believes about sexuality and assesses whether it changes over time and how it compares to other individuals of the same functioning level. Interpreting individual subscales. Subscales can be interpreted as an evaluation of the percentage correct. For example, percentage correct is just the person's subscale score over the maximum total for that subscale. Or you can do a comparison of the subscale scores from another group. T-scores allow the administrator to compare scores between scales. A T-score of 50 is considered average compared to a field testing group. A T-score of 60 or above are one standard deviation above the norm and 70, or two standard deviations, shows a significantly higher knowledge than our large sample. Recording attitude responses. Attitudes have no weighted value. They are the person's perception of right or wrong and are used only for educational, clinical, or research purposes. Assignment of a score would suggest that one attitude is correct. However, it is often important to know what a person's attitudes may be record both the response and write down their comments. A person's attitudes can reflect their religious or moral views and or be an influence of the environment and experiences they have had. There are no judgments about right or wrong attitudes assumed in the area of sexuality. Rather, there are personal perspectives that need to be understood and respected. Comparison of an individual's attitudes to a field sample can be done by plotting the individual's responses on the last page of the record form. The SCAT R may also be used for screening purposes. If only those items printed in blue are administered, subscale scores cannot be interpreted. 
Calculate a screening score by summing up the scores of all items printed in blue and then compute it as a percentage of correct items for the maximum. This score can then be compared to the field sample or to others in the same functioning level. The SCAD-R does not always indicate how much a person knows about sexuality, but how comfortable they are about discussing the material or the ability of the individual to explain it. Comfort level may change. Therefore, an individual may be better able to express their knowledge in a second interview. In Chapter 5 in the manual, we provide two examples of how to write a clinical report based upon the SCAD-R. It is suggested that the administrator of the tool review these carefully prior to writing their first assessment. Okay, so we're going to go to a different section now. Let me just find the right one. Here we go. All right. Can you show me the picture of the person? Who is most like you? The person I know you mean? Not the person you know the most, but the person who maybe looks the most like you or who is the most similar to you. Um, I think I look different than all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, but who would be the most like you? I mean, I know you look different than all these people, but do you think you're the most like this person, or like that person, or like that person, or like that person. Who are you the most like? You can just guess. Well, I think I'm, I'm older than these three, then this one here might be a bit older than I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Can you show me the people it's okay for you to go out with on a romantic date? <laughs> Anyone out here that would be okay to go out with on a romantic date? <laughs> that guy over there? Yeah. Okay. Great. Now I'm going to show you some drawings. Okay, you take a sec. Okay. All right. Let me know when you're ready. <laughs> Sometimes I get the giggles looking at these pictures too. Okay. I'm going to show you some drawings now of good and bad touching. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to tell me what you think about them. All right. Ready? Okay. Now what's happening here? Um, so far, she is sitting on his lap. Mm -hmm. Anything else you can tell me about that? Um, probably holding her in the leg here in between. Maybe, maybe it doesn't feel comfy doing that for long. And can you tell me, Maureen, is that a good way of touching or a bad way of touching? Well, I see her hand on, on him and I think she's trying to say, don't. Right. So what do, you, what do you think then? She doesn't feel great with it. She doesn't like it. Okay. Okay. Let's look at another one. I'm going to turn it this way so I can read what's on the other side. Okay, can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. What's happening here? Oh, they're just both saying, hello, how, how do you do? It's nice to see you. Okay, what do you think about this? Would you say this is a, a bad way of touching, a good way of touching? That's a good way. They're, sh they're shaking hands. here? Um, so far, I think, him, is, is he trying to, trying to push him to move or what? Or say, can you sit somewhere else on, because I want to lay down. think 
about this? Do you think it's a good way of touching or a bad way of touching? Or what do you think about what they're doing? Um, so far, KCP doesn't feel comfy with it, what he's doing, because here it's not comfy, but, but w with your back, good or not good, because depends if they have their backs healthy or not, not healthy, and you're making it worse. Okay, so that means that you think this kind of touch is a good touch or a bad touch? Um, here or no, and so far, but w with your back, it's yes or no, because some of them don't right. like it because their back's not, okay. not good. But when we talk about this, you're saying that's a, yeah, that that's no, is what you said. That's not a good touch. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's happening here? Um, so far, hugging the little child. Mm-hmm. And the child's given, get given her a hug too. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about this touch? Well, seem okay because they come through their family like that themselves, and sometimes they're a little upset, and they and you and you talk to them. What what what's wrong? What's bugging you? Okay. All righty, let's try another one. Oops. There we go. This is Ted. He's in the bathroom at the mall, and a stranger touches his behind. Okay. What do you think about a stranger touching Ted that way? You're doing that out in public is not good. Because okay. other people walk in, they can't stand that. Okay, well what if the stranger offered Ted fifty dollars to let him touch him on his behind. Would that be okay or not okay? Um, he should say, I don't want your stupid money on that and I don't give a care, I just don't like this. Get the freak out of here. Okay. Alrighty, let's try a different one. Okay. Now Paul likes Martha, but Martha doesn't like Paul. So is it okay for Paul to touch Martha if she doesn't want to be touched? No. Okay. Jim, this guy, is a new staff counselor, and he hugs Paula when no one else is around, and he tries to touch her breasts. Mm -hmm. Is it okay for a staff counselor to touch Paula's breasts? Um. Her breasts, I don't think so. Okay. And what should Paula do if Jim wants to touch her in ways that make her uncomfortable? Um, she, <clears throat> if, if there's some, some way she don't like it, she, she should speak and say, what, would, would you get your hands off me? I don't like it. Okay, is there anything else she can do? Um, so far, if he didn't listen, then for the last time, get your hands off me, or do I have to tell somebody? Okay, so she would, she could really say it loudly then. Yep. And she could, and and she could also tell somebody about it. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna turn the page. Alrighty. Sandy's uncle comes into his bedroom at night and touches his private parts. Mm -hmm. Sandy feels very uncomfortable. What should Sandy do? Um. Sandy says, um, if I come in, if I come in and t touch you, would, would you, would you like it? So pl please don't. So he can just say that back to his uncle. Yeah, if he's not comfy with it. Okay. And is there anything else he could do besides tell his uncle that? Well, so far, if, he, if he's trying to say, why don't you like it, and they say, well, I, I, just, I just don't, but, but some other different ones, they, 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 don't, they don't care with them doing that, but just in case of this one, don't like that. Right. Okay. What's wrong with this picture, do you think? Um, 
so far I can see the person sitting down, but maybe this one standing, it might be hiding the other sitting down in front of him. Mm -hmm. Do you know what he's doing, the guy who's standing there? Um, he's just, I think he's just standing there and look or what? Okay. Now what's wrong with this picture? Um, <clears throat> seems like she, she, she just got out of the shower. Mm hmm But, with, with the tall wrap around her and then tall wrap in her hair. So, maybe, maybe she trying to call, call somebody, like, I need something, can you get it for me? Okay, so what's wrong with the picture, do you think? Um, anything wrong with that? No. What's wrong with this picture? Um, that one, he's just looking out the window. Or no, looks like he's look, looking in the, the bathroom to see, see what the other person's doing. Okay, so what's wrong with that picture? Um, so far, at the end, in here, your, your blinds are closed to have privacy, but maybe over here, your blinds or curtains are, are, are not closed if you need privacy and someone's looking into you. Okay, so she needs to have her curtains closed? Yeah, if she doesn't like pe people seeing her getting undressed or going to shower. Okay, so he's, is that what he's doing? That's what it looks like. And if her blinds are open like that, if she's keeping her blinds open, is it okay for him to do that? No. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, can you tell me, is this okay to do with a staff member? Um, they're hugging each other, yeah. So that's okay to do? Okay, how about that? Is that okay to do with the staff? Yep. Okay. Shaking hands. Okay, how about that? There's certain times, yes, and most of the time, no. That's all right. If you're getting, you're doing that around Christmas and doing that on their birthdays and the rest of the time, no. Okay, this is Sarah. Now, Sarah had sex with her brother. Mm -hmm. Is that okay or not okay? With your brother? Mm-hmm. How would your brother get you pregnant? It's supposed to be your husband. <laughs> right, okay, well, let's pretend it's your brother. What do you think about that? Would that be okay? Would that not be okay? You don't think that would be okay? No. Okay, and how come? Well, it don't, it don't make sense what you, it, your sister and brother doing that, but not, not in your own family, this and that. But if you're married to somebody, if they, if they're comfy and you're comfy, so if you're married to somebody, they're comfy, and you're comfy, it would be okay. Yeah. But not when you're in the family, in the same family. Okay. So Karen is on a date with Sam, and he wants to touch her breasts. Mm -hmm. Does she have to let him do that? Um, no, she doesn't have to. Okay. Now what's happening in this drawing? It looks like are they having